Hello and welcome to video six in my wardrobe build series. In today's video, I'll be explaining to you how I completed the construction and installation of the drawer units, the shelves, the lighting and the hanging rails with the usual sprinkling of tips that I've learned along the way. I was hoping this would be the final video in this wardrobe build series because I feel like you've sat through enough videos already. But in hindsight, that would have left too much to cram into this video when I've got the all important doors to concentrate on as well. So I'm going to do a final video in a couple of weeks time concentrating on the build of those doors. So let's start with the drawer units. Now in my last video I got this first bank of drawers installed and then confessed that I made the remaining two, the remaining eight drawers, two millimetres too wide. And there was a reason for this, I relied on my laser measure, which over calibrated the width by two millimetres and I know this because I've since tested a set distance with both this laser measure and my standard tape measure. So I thought I'd start today's video with a quick tip which probably loads of you know already but I had forgotten to avoid this happening to any of you on your wardrobe builds. And thanks goes out to my carpenter mate John for reminding me about this. If you buy a half decent tape measure like this it comes with its width printed on the back so you can simply measure your space like this and then add the length printed on the back to the reading on your tape. That way you've got a pretty accurate total width. But it's worth pointing out that my Fat Max which has always been my favourite tape measure does not give you this option. And I've got to say this to Jima, since one of you guys kindly recommended it, has been my preferred tape measure for all precise measurements on this job. So the first job was to dig out the filler hiding the screws that attach these frames to the wardrobe so that I could remove the frames and plane them down a couple of millimetres with my electric planer. I haven't videoed that because I didn't think I'd bother you with it today because hopefully you won't make the same, same mistake. What I do suggest you do though if you're worried about getting your drawers to fit is if anything uh, a little bit narrower rather than wider with your drawer units themselves because you can always pack them out with washers, glazing packers and as somebody kindly pointed out to me these particular runners have tabs on the back that you could bend out to adjust your drawers to the correct width. After leaving grease from the runners all over the first four drawers I made I decided to paint the remaining eight before installing them. Once I was happy with the alignment of the runners on the drawers I could reposition the screws from the adjustable slots to the more permanent screw holes to prevent any movement of the runners on the drawers over time. It's important to add the front separately as it gives you a chance to make minor adjustments and get them perfectly level before fixing to the drawers which I did with PVA glue, a couple of clamps and two screws attached from behind. I didn't bother to paint the final top coat on the drawer fronts until they were in situ as they can easily get chipped or marked by the clamps during the fixing process. I've been buying these runners for years now from Armongery Direct and I've used them on three projects in this house and I think you'll agree that these black runners blend in quite well with the dark colour scheme of these wardrobes so that's something for you to think about on your projects. They also come in chrome. But this is the first project where I've had to use these soft clothes runners because they were out of stock in the standard runners for all but the bottom drawers which are narrower than the rest of the drawers because of my chimney behind. And I just want to pass on to you my sort of feedback on these soft clothes runners. Personally, I probably wouldn't use them again. I just find them too quirky. You gotta get your drawers bang on for the pin in the soft clothes mechanism to engage properly. You have to give the drawers a bit of a yank to pull them out. And last but not least, the soft close mechanisms only have a 25 kilogram weight capacity, whereas the standard ones have a 45, I think, kilogram weight capacity. So that's just something to be aware of. You can also get concealed drawer runners, more on that in my last video, but I just love the simplicity of these in terms of how it can enable you to make really simply constructed drawers, which is great for us DIYs. And of course, they're a lot cheaper than the concealed version. And so we're on to the wardrobe shelves. So I was concerned about spanning this width here with MDF, even with the thicker 25 millimeters that I was gonna go with because of MDF's tendency to sag over distances of a meter. So I thought I'd go for ply and as I haven't used it before, I thought on this project, I'd go with some birch ply for these draw tops and the shelves above, bought from my local timber merchants in a 23 millimeter thickness. At just over £100 including VAT it was eye-wateringly expensive and very heavy so just as well I had my caster wheel to transport it down into my temporary tented workshop. 
In spite of the thickness, my Urbar plunge saw made light work of it though, as you'd expect. I couldn't decide whether to add pine edging to the front before machining it, but I'm glad I didn't because it machined beautifully with my quarter inch shank beaded edge route a bit bought from Wield and Tools for the fascias earlier on in the project. On the painting, I primed the ply with my shellac based Zinza Bin primer. I'd kept a foam roller sleeve fresh, wrapped in foil and placed inside an old nut tin. So I used this to apply the primer. I then gave the surface a quick light sand with 240 grit sandpaper to remove any raised grain. And after this, applied two coats of the same acrylic eggshell Johnston's top coat with my 100% wool or simulation mohair mini roller sleeves. They're not as quick and easy to use as the foam but the problem with foam sleeves is they take in so much paint and so are much harder to clean. At this stage I haven't screwed these down, the adhesion of the paint is keeping them in position. Plan is to have the door soft closing onto these tops so I want to be able to fine tune, take them out if necessary, once I start experimenting with the doors. Let's have a quick look at the shelf supports in more detail. I've done a video on this in the past, as you do have a couple of options here, from bookcase strips, which need to be routed in advance, through to the more basic supports that you drill and hammer into the wall of the wardrobe. I've used these standard supports in the past, but decided to go one step better on this wardrobe build by using these nickel supports with the added strength of the support socket that they slot into. So after carefully marking out the position of the supports, it was then just a question of drilling a hole for them, I think with a seven and a half millimeter lip and spur bit, and then tapping the supports into place, first with my normal hammer, and then as an afterthought with my nylon Thor hammer that I'll be using on a garden furniture build this summer. Although to be honest, the normal hammer didn't really do any damage to the support sockets. With these support sockets, you've got a smart looking, fantastically strong shelf support system. I did need to route a small indent into the underside of the shelf to prevent it clashing with the support socket, but this actually proved a superb way of pinning the shelf into place to prevent it moving. The wardrobe rails were, you've guessed it, sourced in the most part from Ironmongery Direct. I decided to go for the roughly polished stainless steel 25mm diameter tubing, also available in brushed steel and Ironmongery Direct do other plated finishes. Why did I go stainless? I don't really know. It says in the catalogue it's superior to a plated finish. I was mindful, I guess, of the weight pulling down on these top boxes, but at the end of the day that's going to come down more to the thickness of the tubing than anything else I would have thought. However, I have mixed and matched across ranges as I've gone with these solid brass end sockets in a polished chrome plated finish. I'm Hungry Direct finally supplied me with these components free of charge. These fairly typical centre brackets come as part of the stainless steel range. But because I had a couple of centre brackets hanging around from my day job in the curtain industry, which are reducible in length, and in my case, with the end brackets better match them in terms of style, I used these instead and took a centimeter off the length just to maximize the hanging space in the cupboard. Is this necessary? No, not really. That's just me being a bit OCD. These are fiddly to measure and install, particularly given the brass slot head screws that come supplied. You have to grit your teeth, take your time, and for the center brackets, I found my Weha offset bit enormously useful. Which brings us on to the final section of today's video, the lighting. For the initial install of the lighting, you'll need to go back to part three of this video series. Today's video is all about connecting everything together, tidying it up and checking it works in preparation for the doors. Each wardrobe top box has wires trailing from the sensor switch and LED strip light in the wardrobe below, whilst another wire goes from the sensor switch all the way back to the main driver connected to the mains. The central wardrobe has two LED strips, as one of you brilliantly pointed out that this single strip along the top might not illuminate each of the shelves. And this left-hand wardrobe has all the wires from the other wardrobes channeled back to it for connecting to the main driver and then back to the mains. All of this amounts to a lot of cabling and I wanted something simple to tidy these cables up to prevent them being accidentally snagged when we use these top boxes for storage. So from MDF offcuts from the build and some 4mm sheet ply I had lying about, I created five boxes with sliding doors on the front, running in grooves, routed out using my trim router, with the sides and top of each box cut down using my trusty circular saw with the fence attached. After gluing and pinning these together quite crudely, I'm not overly worried about the finish. 
I gave them a coat of primer and a couple of coats of top coat and then glued these to the back of each wardrobe above the point where the wires surface in the top box. I could then connect the sensor switch and LED cable to the distribution block and carefully pack the wires into each box. For the far left top box that housed the mains cable, the main driver and all the wires for the other wardrobes, I made a much wider box to accommodate all the cables. My LED strips came on a 5 meter reel that can be trimmed to the desired length by simply snipping along the indicated cut line between the two connection points. It really is that simple. I then had to connect the driver connection cable to the end of the strip by carefully inserting it into the connector and then closing the cap. I did find insertion was easier if I trimmed off the adhesive from the back, but it doesn't mention this in the instructions. And if you do do this, do it really carefully so as not to scrape through the connections beneath. I could then peel off the adhesive strips and stick the LED strips into the routed channels that I cut into the wardrobes in video three. And I'd left a channel above the central sensor switch so that the LED strip could pass through uninterrupted. Finally, onto the sensor switches. I found earlier on in the build that the additional insert piece for when you're recessing the switch as I am, rather than sticking it to the ceiling of the wardrobe, is impossible to remove once pushed in because of these claws embedding in the pine wedge I'd made to accommodate the sensor switch. So I cut off the majority of the insert piece leaving just the front section, which made insertion and possibly removal later down the line much easier. And by routing the channels backwards, I'm ensuring that they only shine light where they need to rather than into our eyes because it can be quite glaring if you look directly at the LEDs. One final point, if you're thinking about installing lighting on your project, don't be intimidated, do it because it's really straightforward. Remember, I hadn't installed any lighting. I didn't have a clue about lighting before I undertook this project. And whilst the channeling of the wardrobe is a little bit fiddly and time consuming, the lighting itself is simple. The sensor switch itself has two connectors, one which plugs into the distributor block that comes with the sensor and sits in the wardrobe, and the other plugs into the main driver connected to the mains. And then the LED strip itself has one connector that connects into the distributor block in the wardrobe. It's that simple. So that's it for today and you're now totally up to speed with where I've got to on this wardrobe build. In a couple of weeks time, I will be showing you how I've constructed the doors and installed them. So it'd be great to have you on board for that video. If you liked today's video, it'd be fantastic if you could give it the thumbs up below. And don't forget details of everything that I've talked about today will be in the description below the video, which you can access on your smartphone, flown? <laughs> smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your PC by clicking on the show more button. And last but not least, if you're new to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you soon.